Welcome to Spin Logic. This short tutorial will show you the basic steps you need to know to write a competitive price analysis report awarded based on lowest price. For step-by-step -step guidance on best value competitions and other price analysis methods, please see our other video tutorials available at spendlogic.com slash help. Let's get started. Here we have the Spend Logic home screen. From this screen, click Start a New Report. This opens our Purchase Order Details screen. On the Purchase Order Details screen, we will be providing information that will be used in the header of our final report. The information on this screen is also what's used in the Search Report screen. Anything you type here becomes a searchable data item. In the upper left-hand corner, you see Analysis and Proposed Prices. These will change as you complete your price analysis reports. Below, you'll see the series of steps required to complete the price analysis. Since we're on the PO screen, the steps you see here refer to the purchase order itself. Individual parts reports will have slightly different steps required based on the price analysis method you use. As I fill in this screen, you'll notice that some of the information is visible in the header. This provides a reminder as you progress as to what report you're working on. As you continue down the page, you'll end up with a question asking if this is a competition or not. Today, we're going to choose yes. Much like other methods, you're now asked to identify what parts will be included in the competition. A key difference here is that in competition, we're not able to reuse individual parts reports. If you want to copy an existing competitive report, this must be done from the search screen. To get to the search screen, you can use the link at the top of the screen here, or click search reports from the home page. For now, we'll continue with a new competition. Adding parts is simple. Begin by typing the part number in the part input box. If the part already exists in the system, you can choose it from the list. If your part doesn't show up, simply choose the last choice to create a new part. Input the part number and description and click Save. A best practice is to go to your ERP or purchasing system and copy the part number and description exactly as it's shown there. This will ensure that the number and description is correct and that other employees can use it without creating new variations. Next, you're going to indicate the quantity that you're buying. This should match the quantity that you included on the RFQ. I'll use 20 for this part. Now you can continue down and add as many parts as you need to fill out the competition. You can see that I've added one additional part to our competition so that now we have two. SpendLogic continues to add new lines, but when you're done, click Next. We're now taken to the competition details screen. This differs from other methods in that typically you would see a parts report screen and would edit each parts report individually. However, since we're in a competition and only one parts report is allowed, SpendLogic skips this step. You can return to the purchase order details screen to add additional parts by clicking the red Return to PO button in the header. On this screen, we're providing a couple of facts about timing and then specifying the nature of the competition we're conducting. The first two items ask if the bidders all received the RFQ or RFP on the same date and whether they were all required to respond on the same date. Since providing some bidders with more time than others could provide an unfair advantage, choosing no for one or both of these questions will require additional information in order to proceed. For this example, I'm, I'll choose yes for both. Next, we need to specify the type of competition. Our choices are lowest price, technically acceptable, and best value. Lowest price competitions are scored solely on price, whereas best value competitions are scored on price and other criteria that you specify. You should always indicate your award methodology in your RFPs and RFQs so that your bidders are motivated to provide responses that meet your criteria. For this example, I'm going to choose lowest price. For an example of best value competitions, go to the video tutorial section on spendlogic.com slash help. The last question on this page is regarding your intent to award a purchase order to one bidder or to multiple bidders. Choosing multiple bidders will result in a mini competition for each part and could result in multiple awards. For this example, I'll choose one award and then come back and specify multiple to show you the difference. When you're done with this screen, click next. Here we have the bid details page. You can see a blank chart that shows the parts and required quantities that we indicated on the purchase order details screen. 
Remember, if you want to add more parts, simply click Return to PO in the upper right hand corner and specify any additional parts at the bottom of the screen. Now that we have our bid table set up, it's time to add bidders. Clicking the Add Bidder button brings up a new screen. Here we can add some key information about our bidder, beginning with our bidder name and size classification. As you type in the supplier name, note that it appears at the top of the screen. This will remain visible throughout the bid detail screens and becomes important when you have multiple bidders. Next, we're asked whether the bidder responded with a bid or a written no bid. Including written no bids is an important step that is often overlooked in competition documentation. If no response at all was received, then the bidder should not be included in these screens. You're then required to upload a copy of the bidder's response, whether it's their quote or their written no bid response. Last, you can indicate whether this bid was included in the competition or not. Choosing yes requires no additional information. However, if you indicate that this bid was removed for technical reasons or was outside of the competitive range, additional explanations are required. In this example, I'll click yes. When you're done with this screen, click next. Now, we're being asked to input the actual bid. At the top of the screen, you can see that we're looking at Acme's bid screen and specifically this part number. The quantity shown here in the header is the quantity that was included in the RFP. The first box has already been filled in for us. SpinLogic assumes that in most cases, the bidder will respond with a quantity that matches the RFP or RFQ. However, if your bidder chooses to include a different quantity, for example if they have capacity constraints, you can input a different bid quantity here. Doing so requires additional information. For now, I'll leave it with the same quantity as the RFQ. Next, we're required to input bid amounts for recurring and non-recurring costs. Input the exact prices that are provided by the bidder. In this case, I only had recurring costs. The bid adjustment boxes would be used if your competition resulted in bids that were not directly comparable. For example, if your RFQ requested pricing for widgets and one bidder included pricing for widgets plus carrying cases while the others did not, you would use the bid adjustment to remove the cost of carrying cases since you do not intend to purchase them. Positive values in this area will add scope and adjust the bid upward, while negative values will remove scope and adjust the bid downward. If a value is added to this box, you'll be required to provide an explanation. When you're done, click Next. If you have multiple parts, such as we do in this case, you'll be taken to the next part in the competition. Again, at the top, you see which bidder you're working on, and just below you'll see the part quantity, number, and definition. Complete this screen just as you did for the first part, then click Next or Done. Now, we see that our chart has one bidder included. To add additional bidders, click Add Bidder. I've gone ahead and done this already, and here are the results. At this point, we have in front of us the completed bid table. The green cells indicate which bidder is recommended for award. In this case, you see that Zedco has the lowest overall bid and therefore has been awarded all the parts. Next, I'll show you how to change the award recipient as well as how to award individual lines separately. First, we'll look at overriding the award. Remember that we chose single award on the competition details page. As a result, we see that Supplier 2 has been awarded all of the items. If for some reason you need to override this and award to the other bidder, you can do this by clicking Override Award here. Here we have the Override Award screen, which requires that you identify the bidder and select the appropriate rationale. I can choose Acme and indicate that the winning bidder did not have adequate capacity. When you're done, Click Done. Now you see that the award has been moved to the other bidder. You'll also notice that the competition is shown as modified. Clicking this allows you to change the awardee, the rationale, or remove all modifications. Once I remove modifications and click Done, you can see that it reverts back to the original award state. Now, let's look at a scenario where a decision has been made to award to multiple bidders. To do this, go to the Competition Details link in the left-hand navigation. Here, you can modify the bottom selection so that multiple awards may be made. 
Clicking Next, you now see that the award recommendation has changed. Each bidder has been awarded a portion of the total based on low price and the parts and quantities awarded are shown in green. Notice that we now have an override award option for each line item. The functionality here is slightly different than it was for single award. You can see that now we're given an option for specifying how many units were awarded. We can choose to award a portion to the first bidder and a portion to the second, or all can be awarded to one bidder. Just like with a single award, the line will show modified if a change is made. Furthermore, clicking Modified leads you back to the override screen. You can make changes here or modifications can be removed by clicking the Remove All button at the bottom. The last input on this screen is for any specific details that would be useful to someone reviewing this package. You should include those here in the competition summary. When you're done with this screen, click Next. This is our risk check screen. As with all methods, if you see a lot of red flags on this screen, it means that your report is likely to be scrutinized. Try to minimize the number of risk checks. For those that can't be removed, make sure your explanations are complete. Click Next when you're done with this page. Now you get to our final summary screen. You can review the entries and download the price analysis report using this button, or review all of the entries that you've made below. When you're done, clicking Return to PO returns to the original screen that you started at.